Hello, everybody. This is the A State Sports Tech Christmas Special. I'm Dalton Adams, and I'm joined with Patrick and Landon today. Uh, today, our topic and question is: Who in sports is on the naughty list, and who is on the ni nice list? Uh, I'll start off with uh, Patrick. What do you think? Um, obviously, I'm gonna talk from my experience from track and field. So probably I'm gonna talk again about uh, Russian and Belarusian uh, athletes. They're banned from from competing again. And uh, it was actually and uh, it was a breaking news a few days ago. They released uh, the Olympic Committee uh, said that they can compete during the Olympics next year, uh, but actually they ended up, ended up that athletic association didn't uh, let them uh, compete again. So they're not gonna be allowed to compete again. So this, they're gonna be on the on the blacklist. Uh, so they're not gonna be allowed to, to compete uh, on the nice list. Okay. Hmm. Let me let me take a few minutes. Okay. okay. Landon, what do you think? Yeah, I'll start with the nice list or the naughty list rather for me. Um, to begin, my first name is is a basketball player who happened to goes by the name of Dylan Brooks. Um, Dylan Brooks is just a clown, a bozo. Um, <laughs> I could go on and on with Dylan Brooks. He's just, if you picture a naughty list, um, he's going to be sitting right pretty on top of it. Okay. He just thinks <laughs> that, you know, he's, he compares himself to arguably the greatest player of all time, LeBron James, so likes to stare him down, which uh, I, I think is pretty cool. But just all in all, the, with the mannerisms that Dylan Brooks gives us as basketball fans, he is just on top of the naughty list, he likes just, I think he's, he might lead the league this year in personal fouls, which doesn't say too much, but it says enough mm -hmm. about his character. And he's just not a great guy, as I would like to presume. And he just sits atop of my naughty list. And I'll go ahead and get my other guy out of the way as well mm -hmm. on the naughty list. Um, some might not be familiar with this name. This is kind of an oldie, but uh, Vontez Perfect. Um, he might be, I'm going to go ahead and say it, might be the biggest menace in football in the last decade at least. Um, my, I'm a Steelers fan personally, and I won't give him all the blame for this, but he will take the cake for most of the blame, um, giving Antonio Brown CTE, or if you'd like to say that. You know, it's not diagnosed, but you can clearly tell there's something wrong with Antonio Brown. And I'm going to lead – to say that Vontaze Perfect was the main reason for that because he has given Antonio Brown probably the worst hit of his career and probably more. And, you know, he left him sitting out there on that field and just – he looked like he was gone. He really did, Antonio Brown. He literally took the life out of Antonio Brown. And he's always been known for the cheap shots in football and all this thing. So, yeah, I just – Vontaze Perfect – might top Dylan Brooks, but those two guys definitely belong on my naughty list. Yeah. I got I got one name for mine. It just happened recently. I feel a little personal about it. I'm sure a lot of Chiefs fans do after last night's game. Uh, Kadarius Tony with the offsides call yesterday for that for that really close game that we could have seen. That that would be right now personally for me. He's up there um, about that game. But what about y'all's uh, nice list? How y'all feeling? I think on my uh, my nice list is going to be definitely Piotr Lisek. He's an Olympic pole vaulter from Poland. Mm -hmm. So he's won many, uh, many medals during uh, world championships and stuff. So he's a very nice person. He talks to everybody. He's like a little clown, let's say. And because, as, like we know, uh, as we know, there's many, many uh, great athletes who don't want to talk to like other people. Sometimes they're just like very arrogant. Let's say he's a very open-minded person. He talks to everybody. He's very funny. And I really like this person. How about, uh, how about you, Landon? Well, I have also two guys for my nice list, and I'll try and get through them as swiftly as possible. Um, Dak Prescott, to start off, um, many people not, might not like him as a football player, but he is a great person off the football field, if not on. Um, people like to criticize Dak Prescott a lot, and he's went through a crap ton in his life. Lost his mother growing up. And he lost his brother in 2020 to suicide during COVID. And that's might be besides the point, but just the fact that he remains, you know, he runs a, he's a part of a charity for cancer research and he does many other things off the field and just having to deal with those things and still remain a good person. I just don't see anyone 
better fit to be on my nice list. Mm. And secondly, Dak Prescott also won a man of the or like the Walter Payton Man of the Year award. And this next guy I'm going to talk about also won this award, and that is Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson has there's a he went to the Seattle Children's Hospital for like every Tuesday for years and. That had to cease due to COVID, but I'm sure he's back there now, if I had to guess. And Russell Wilson isn't also in the same boat as Dak Prescott. As maybe they get hate on the field, but off the field, they're two incredible individuals. And Russell Wilson and his wife actually started a charity or a non, like a nonprofit organization called Why Not You, which leads youth members um, just to say, why not you? You know, why not beat this disease? Why not you, you know, just move forward in life and all this stuff? And so he's a great guy, and as well as Dak Prescott. So those two guys will be on my nice list. Nice. And I have to go uh, my one on uh, my nice list right now. Uh, I've just been seeing him around a lot, especially on TikTok, Instagram. Jason Kelsey, he came out with that Christmas album, you know, with all the teams, uh, including his brother. And it just it really uh, made me jolly for the time of year, and it really made me excited to see all these, like, football players I had watched all the time, like, yep. just singing along and being happy for the holidays. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you all for your time. Uh, that's all the time we have for this segment. You're watching A-State Sports Take Christmas Special. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, West Side Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. I think one of the things I learned at Arkansas State was life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond to it, and that's just something that I live by. State is home and they're going to treat you like you're a part of the family. Sports Take Christmas Special. I'm Hannah Hatfield and I'm joined today by Tristan Harlan and Law Kay. Our topic for this segment is who's Rudolph of the sports world? Um, so I'll kind of turn it over to you guys and let's have this discussion. Who do you think is the Rudolph of the sports world? Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, I'll let buddy. you go first, Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so Law Kay Maddox here and I'm going to kind of get it kicked off here. He's lying. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I have a I have a few picks for this. You know, it's kind of hard to just pin it to one person. Um, you know, you have some greats out there that have really, you know, you think about Rudolph, okay? He kind of um, was the right. back. He was on the back burner a little bit. He wasn't the head leader of the Rudolph, I mean, the reindeer herd, pack, whatever it is. I don't know the plural for reindeer, Full but, um, you know, he was kind of on the back burner, but after a little bit of adversity came up, and now he, he was the front runner. Um, you know, when you think about that, you think you got guys like Manny Pacquiao from the Philippines, okay? He was sleeping on the street, you know, didn't have anything to eat to being a, one of the biggest UFC fighters in the world. Um, and then, you know, but for a little bit modern here, football, we're going to go with Travis Kelsey. If you think about it, okay, he's taken wannabe country super – like want to be country singers bringing them up you know who else does it like him okay you know hey, putting you, people on the map he's a good guy had point. a little bit of adversity you know playing for Cincinnati uh got kicked off the team by none other than you know the, our loved Butch Jones um and, but you know they put him back on there proved that he was a, a front runner and could do it put him in the tight end position and he got a call from Andy Reid and he's back on back on the Chiefs so Tristan, what are you thinking? Hey, man, what, real quick, I just want to say, if it wasn't for Travis Kelsey, there would be no Taylor Swift. No, no. I mean, look at him. He's so, making dreams come true. So, furthermore, I'm going to jump in my DeLorean and go back a little bit, back in time for my Rudolph of the sports world. And I'm going to go back to an era where football was more, more than physical than you see today. And I'm going to go with former Saints quarterback Drew Brees, okay? Oh, yeah. 
Drew Brees coming out of Purdue was very not highly looked at. He was thought as a underperformer. He was too short, too little to really excel at the next level. So he gets drafted with the first pick in the second round in 2001 to then the San Diego Chargers. You know, he starts, he gets benched for Doug Flutie, former Heisman winner. Then, you know, he bounces around from the bench to starting. The, and, you know, they're not able to get over the hump of going to the Super Bowl or nonetheless the AFC Championship game despite having one of the greatest running backs of all time in LaDainian Thompson. But then you have when he gets hurt, you know, he his shoulder, he can't throw with his right shoulder. So it gave the Chargers an excuse to get rid of him. He goes, he comes to New Orleans, and then that's when he kind of, you know, helps the city of New Orleans rebuild after Hurricane Katrina, the devastation, the flooding, even to the Louisiana Superdome, which it was called then. Now it's, uh, I do believe, the Caesar Superdome. But nonetheless, you have this guy who's very short, not your typical quarterback like a Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, but he was still able to be one of the passing leaders when he ended up hanging him up and he was still able to win a Lombardi Trophy for the city of New Orleans, arguably when they needed it most, Coming, still coming off that Katrina hit, still kind of rebuilding. Because, you know, once you go through something like that, you're never truly going to be back to where you are. And with the help of Drew Brees and the rest of the Saints organization, they were able to rebuild. Yeah, absolutely. He's just a respectable guy, I think. Well, I think my person would have to be, this is kind of uh, like a our generation kind of thing, but Stephen Curry, how do we feel about that? I hey, think, this is your pick there. I'm, I'm interested like, in hearing it. First of all, like, I don't know his exact height. He's probably like 6'1", 5'11", five, five is 6'1". He's not 5'11", I'll tell you that. No, he's taller. He's taller. He's like 6'1". He's not very tall for, you know, a basketball player. But, like, in high school, he was like a really good shooter. And, like, I remember um, they said that he had a lot of people looking at him, but then, like, or not too many people looking at him. But that one guy, like, took a chance on him. He worked really hard. Then, like, once he went to college and stuff, like, everybody wanted him. He decided to stay where he was. Um, can't remember the school. Davidson? Was it Davidson? I yeah, and then right, now yeah. look at him. One of the best shooters in the NBA. Yeah, so. probably the best shooter in he's the NBA. He's not the best right shooter of all time, but he's – Not he's the best talking. shooter of all time, but like, in the NBA right now, three-point percentage-wise. If it wise, wasn't for that one coach, he probably would have never got a coach? shot. So. What is his name? His first coach. In the I NBA? Tell you. No, 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 in college. Couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. I don't study Davidson athletics. Mm -hmm. You should. It's because of Stephen Curry. All right. That's all the time we have for this segment. You're watching the A-State Sports Take Christmas special. I'm Hannah Hatfield, and I'm here with Tristan and Blake. That's all we have for today. (laughs) You liar. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. I think one of the things I learned at Arkansas State was life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond to it, and that's just something that I live by. A-State is home, and they're going to treat you like you're a part of the family. The A-State Sports State Christmas Special. I'm Cooper Melder, and I'm joined by Ty Phillips and Brady Michael. And our topic for this segment, who is the Scroogiest sportscaster? Now, I'm going to break it down real quick. When you think of Scrooge, you're thinking a guy that's, you know, not always anti-Christmas, but for the sports casting take, you know, he's always kind of, you know, it seems like he's always kind of down in the dumps, not really too happy so, Brady, take it away. Well, the first guy that actually came to mind for me is a guy that you're not really seeing around the scene anymore. And he didn't call a lot of games to begin with, but he was featured on Fox, NFL Network, and that's Terry Bradshaw. Okay. Okay. And 
not only does he look like he could play Scrooge, which is a category of its own, but I actually have a family story from uh, my aunt and uncle meeting Terry Bradshaw. Oh. And he was one of the rudest guys. Did really? not want any attention. Did not want to give an autograph at the restaurant that they found him at. And uh, I believe it was around Fort Worth, Texas. And so when you think about that, combined with his personality, I think that what it comes down to as far, it's not exactly a sportscaster, as I said. Yeah. But when you look in the sports media world, I don't think you can get more Scrooge than Terry Bradshaw. And he's even out there doing all these commercials trying to make himself look like he's a little bit more jolly than he is, and it's just a facade. I see right through you, Terry. Can't fool me. You know, kind of coming off this, I'm going off looks for mine. So I don't, I'm not really looking into that personality like uh, my friend uh, Old Brady went into, but I'm more going into looks. And I think Marv Albert okay. just looks like he's anti Christmas. I feel like you'd be like, here, Marv, I got you a gift, man. And he'd be like, I right, get that out of my face. I don't want to see it. Like, yeah, I don't like Christmas. You know, I don't want to. Yeah. So that's just who I'm going with. And, you know, if we're going to the wide world of sportscasters and, like, people who have commentated games, this is, like, a whole separate thing. If I'm going to a commentator that has commentated games before, I would say a one contender for a Scrooge would be Tristan Harlan. Unpopular opinion, but popular opinion. <laughs> wow. I've heard of that guy. Wow. i heard of him. Because technically that's a sportscaster. He's called many games uh, for Westside and for Cabot High School, so I would say that's a contender. But I just feel like Marv is a little bit more scroogier than Tristan just because I feel like Tristan's anti-Christmas. Yeah, and I think uh, the Westside head coach did not like Tristan with what he said at one time about the team. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If besides that fact – my Scroogeous is kind of based off this year, mm -hmm. Al Michaels. Just okay. him on Thursday night primetime. I mean, do we blame him? He's Not been exactly. – he's a great sports caster, sports broadcaster, but I just feel like this year, you know – He's been down in the dumps. He, the Thursday he, night games, if they're they're high, they're high intensity. You should be excited to call them. But we he hasn't had the greatest matchups. I mean, yeah. No offense, no. but who who is besides our beloved professor and Mr. Sullivan? I don't think anyone was too hyped up to watch the Steelers versus the. Patriots, and you know, even with the Cowboys playing the Seahawks, it's just not a game you really wanted to see. But the Cowboys Seahawks, it was a good game, but it just yeah. feels like every Thursday night game um, just has been terrible. But it's he's been, been a little. He's been a Scrooge. He's been. Yeah, a he's also just declined as a sportscaster this yeah. year, and I feel like you have uh, Big Wit on Thursday night footballs carrying all the energy. Yeah, and then it just leaves Al Michaels looking like. Scrooge. Especially having Kirk Herbstreet but beside him. Yeah, I could understand that might bring you down a little bit, especially because Kirk was actually a guy I was considering for this. But he puts on too happy of a face too often, and I feel like that kind of removed it from me. Yeah, yeah. And if we're talking about just the sports world in general, I'm yeah. going to have to say Scroogeous has to be Bill Belichick. I mean, guy won't even sign his name to be a Madden. All right, hasn't. man. If you have an opportunity to be in such a great game like Madden, and then uh, you say mm -hmm. no, you're a Scrooge in my book. Yes, yes. I still take my picks though. For what I, I mean, I feel hold my picks up because I feel like they are two Scroogeiest people. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. You have been watching this episode of A State Sports Steak Christmas Special. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, West Side Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. I think one of the things I learned at Arkansas State was life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond to it, and that's just something that I live by. A 
state is home and they're going to treat you like you're a part of the family. Welcome back to the A-State Sports Take Christmas Special. I'm Mr. Sullivan and joined by my guest, T. Kalama and Jisoo Lee. Thank you both very much for, for joining me for Thank this you. segment. The question, the topic that we have here, who would win your jolliest athlete award? Who is that athlete that, you know, is this year or years past that's just the most jolliest person you've ever seen? Um, for me, he's a tennis player. Um, He's from Serbia, uh, Novak Djokovic. Okay. So he's the number one player, and uh, according to the tennis um, to professionals. So the reason I um, admire him, or, or I feel so um, a good player for him, is um, his personalities. I mean, he is. Um, he has his um, the way he cracks jokes whenever he is on the field, uh, making f funny moments, and even if he is with media personnel, the way he try to make uh, the environment more casual or something like that. And he is a loving person, and, like he loves animals. Yeah. And the way he basically, I like, I recently was his interview, and the way he talked about his life history things. Um, um, so that's what makes me him, um, the way he cheer up. Um, in the, even if he lose the tournament, mm -hmm. the way he cheer up, hold, Audiences, that makes me more like he could win a jolliest player, <laughs> athlete of the year. So that's why I chose him. You say he's somebody that uh, e even in a defeat is going to be the last person around to sign autographs for people in attendance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Jisoo, what do you think? Uh, okay. Uh, I'll pick uh, Shohei Otani as a, the jolliest Mr. Seven... What is it? 70, 70, 700 million, million yeah, right. dollar hole. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's got a lot of reasons to be jolly, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, as you know, like, oh, Shohei Otani is the Japanese prof uh, professional baseball player. And uh, I don't know the all the time, but at least uh, clearly uh, now is the best baseball player now. Mm -hmm. so, he is. Oh, yeah. So, oh, basically, he played for uh, Los Angeles in. Major League Baseball, but uh, now uh, Otani moved from Los Angeles uh, Angels to Los Angeles Do Dodgers. So he earned the highest pay contract, uh, not only in baseball, baseball, uh, and but also just yeah. whole, yeah, whole sports. Yeah, probably the, the what we've gotten is the largest contract in yeah. North American sports history yeah, by right. far. He, he, his contract's been compared to. There's a lot of. Uh, professional hockey teams that don't even have 700 million in, yeah. in their total yeah. every player that they have yes. doesn't even combine to 700 million it's unreal yeah, so ahead. even i compared with another player so oh, oh and he signed up a record 10 years of oh, then seven 700 million contract to mm -hmm. play for uh, la dodgers this is more than oh, when the Lionel messi signed up uh, signed with Barcelona, yep. and, uh, and when the uh, Cristiano Ronaldo mm. uh, signed with like Saudi Arnas, yeah, Ar yeah, the Arnasar. So yeah, it's really, yeah, oh big. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, I got two. Yeah. Wow. First one, you're more North American college football fans are going to know. Congratulations to Jaden Daniels. Winner of the 2023 Heisman Trophy. Heisman Trophy is the, basically the MVP of college football. Uh, well deserving for him. He should be back next year to play for LS Boo. I mean, you, sorry. <laughs> Tristan's going to get me for that one. I know it. Um, so, yeah, best player in college football. Looking forward to seeing him in a bowl game. Uh, this year. I believe they're in the Relia Quest Bowl, I believe is where they're going to go. So, but. In in the entire sports world in general, you actually mentioned the name previously, Cristiano Ronaldo, the goat. In yeah, my the opinion, goat. the goat, Easy. the goat. Easy. All right, on three, we got to do it. We got to do it on the, the suey on three. One, two, three. Sue. There we 
go. Missy yeah, go I can't believe crazy I just did now. That. <laughs> yeah, go me. I mean, you look how you know it, it, get away from all the money he's made and stuff. Just how friendly he is to fans. You've seen fans run on the pitch, which of course is not allowed, like during matches and stuff. And he's not gonna like try to throw you know throw them to the side or get rid of them. He's he's gonna give a hug, maybe take a selfie, things like that. The excitement he gets when scoring goals and the level that he gives his teammates, he brings them up. We know even during um, the year that they won the European Soccer Championships, he went down injured in the final, could not return in the first half, did not come back to the match, but was on the sideline cheering his team on, Mm -hmm. getting that victory, and that match ended up going in extra time, and then they end up winning in extra time. But just somebody that just exudes positivity right. in everything. I would have to say it's definitely Cristiano Ronaldo, probably my jolliest right, athlete right. of all time. Yeah. So easy, I want to thank easy. both of you for being yeah. on with me. Yeah. No pressure being on with the pref- no, press. No, no, no. <laughs> you guys were fantastic. Yeah, it, it's yeah. a great topic to <laughs> yeah. talk about, and I want to yeah. thank both Tika and Jisoo for joining me this yeah. afternoon. Thank you. Uh, thank here you. on this special. That's all the time we have for this segment. Stay with us. You're watching the Ace 8 Sports Take Christmas Special. ASU TV. Shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. I think one of the things I learned at Arkansas State was life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond to it, and that's just something that I live by. State is home and they're going to treat you like you're a part of the family. This is the A State Sports Take Christmas Special. I'm Lauren Pendleton and I'm joined by Hayden and Jesus. Our topic for this segment is what is the best sport to watch on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? Jesus, I'll start with you. Um, I've only, in my past memory, I, I only remember watching sports on Christmas one day. Uh, it was 2021, Christmas, I want to say Christmas Day, the Vikings were playing the Saints. It was the worst day of my life. <laughs> uh, Alvin Kamara put up five touchdowns on the Vikings. Jesus. And it was not a good day. Uh, I wish I hadn't watched it, but oh well. But I would say, I guess NFL, just because I'm more of an NFL guy. But basketball is, like, iconic on Christmas Day. Um, I can't remember when uh, I think Cleveland Warriors played. They had, like, those iconic jerseys, like the yellow and blue, like all colored. But I'm still more of an NFL guy. I say NFL. Yeah, I'd kind of have to say the NFL, too. I know most of our family watches mainly football which sometimes there is basketball on and stuff, but we really don't watch a lot of sports on Christmas, but if it was any, they'd probably flip the channel and it'd probably be football because, like I mentioned before, we do the whole 24 hours of Christmas story on Christmas, so that's just playing the whole entire time. But it'd probably be football. I would say, well, for me personally, I think I would do uh, NBA basketball just because they kind of – I'm not going to say that they're petty with the matchups, but, like, they'll do the teams that played in the finals, and then they'll do, like, another rivalry team um, uh, throughout the previous season. And I know this year they're doing um, the uh, the Nuggets and the Warriors versus um, – Nuggets, Warriors, and then Celtics, Lakers, yeah. Sixers, Heat, Mavericks, Suns, and then Bucks and Knicks. Yeah, so those are pretty pretty big matchups, like rival matchups. And I was, I think players play a little harder in the uh, like for Christmas games as well. Because uh-huh, to always... me personally, I don't really think the they play that hard in the NBA, but that's just me.
But I know for like Christmas games, they they always play harder than usual. I know, and on Christmas, you better hope your team wins though, because yeah. you'll just be all. <laughs> it yeah. would not I, be I a good time like with your team the, losing on Christmas. Yeah, would y'all like? Would y'all like want to go to an actual game on Christmas, or would you rather just watch that like at home? I'd probably, I'd just rather be at home. Yeah. Probably. probably, I would probably go, just because I do most of my Christmas stuff the day before. Mm -hmm. So like, oh right, then you'd be able to go going to a game on Christmas. They would probably be cool, but like if your team loses, that wouldn't be fun. It'd worse. be a neat experience. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Going on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. but it would really suck if. You went and your team lost. Yeah. <laughs> if I was to do it, I think I would rather go to, like, a game, like, later on in the day. Like, spend Christmas doing, like, family stuff. And then, and then like, go later, yeah, like an yeah, evening yeah. game. Yeah. But that, that's just me, though. Do y'all think the, the Christmas tradition is more of a bigger deal than Thanksgiving tradition in terms of, like, uh, sports? I feel like my family watches more sports on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. than they do on Christmas. I don't think anything tops while well, watching the – Lions and the Cowboys lose on Thanksgiving, so. <laughs> well, the dance, yeah, they lost this year, so. Yeah, I think sports is the bigger thing on Thanksgiving, too, because it's like yeah. you have, I know college basketball is going on, but they're having, like, actual games on Thanksgiving rather than on Christmas. They're a little bit more, I guess, family-friendly with games on Christmas for college, but, like, professional sports is, like, go do your job. Yeah, and I feel like it's more of a tradition on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. than it is on Christmas. You'd ask people to be like, oh, I watch it more on Thanksgiving than I would on Christmas. Yeah, I didn't even know that any other sport had games on Christmas other than the NBA. Did they, did they play on Christmas this year, football? Uh, Yeah, they play Chiefs play, Raiders, Eagles play the Giants, and then 49ers play the Ravens. Okay, who do you think going to win that game? Which one? Uh, The first two, the Chiefs. Chiefs or the Raiders? Chiefs are going to win that. I don't know the Chiefs. They've been <laughs> well. They lost the last game, did they not? Yeah, they did yeah. off of a yeah. Off of my home started crying about it. But yeah, <laughs> I mean it was a fair call. First time they call against him, he just starts crying about it. So yeah, I'm anxious <laughs> to see that. Um, the um, Celtics uh, Clippers game. I mean, not Clippers Celtics Lakers game. Yeah. Just because that is like a. I guess it's uh, one of the two bigger teams in the NBA just from tradition. And, mm -hmm. I mean, the Lakers, they're, they're looking pretty good this season. They just won the in-season tournament. Yeah, and they, they look pretty solid. If you have Anthony Davis playing the way he played the other day, you're going to win a lot of games like that. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. We should see. I mean, I'm not really worried about the Denver game with the Warriors because. Who do you think is going to win that? Denver. The Warriors <laughs> are pitiful you think this so? season. Oh, you've seen the Warriors. Klay Thompson not showing up to the games. You got Steph Curry playing all the minutes, scoring all the buckets. Denver's taking that one. What about the other two games, Bucks and Knicks? Mm, but I think the Bucks going to come out with that one if Giannis is healthy. But Dang. I don't know. The, the Knicks are – they're an okay team. They play hard. but They're not going to win anything. No, not, not anything serious. Well, now that looks like our time. Um, um, this is the A-State Sports Day Christmas special. Thank you to Jesus and Hayden for joining me today. Um, that's a wrap. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. I think one of the things I learned at Arkansas State was life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond to it, and that's just something that I live by. A-State is home, and they're going to treat you like you're a part of the family.
A State Sports Take Christmas Special. I'm Eddie Wilson, and I'm joined by Joe Jackson and Jacob Kosinski. Our topic for this segment is what does A State Athletics want for Christmas? Uh, and Jacob, what is your opinion on that, or what do you think oh, A State wants for Christmas? There's a couple things. I mean, obviously, your mind goes straight to football. I mean, the first bowl game since 2019 that they're going to I believe the Camellia Bowl. Um, you know, you have a freshman quarterback in Jalen Rayner who's hopefully going to stay here. Uh, my thing, though, I go to basketball. I mean, right now you have Brian Hodgson's first year here. Um, you have a pretty talented group of guys that, you know, uh, headlined by Gonzalez, or not Gonzalez, uh, by, um, by Todd and by Nelson and by all those guys. Um, and they're looking to go at Louisville, who, again, to be fair, is not very good this year. They're pretty awful in terms of their, you know, their team uh, progression and everything. They're doing pretty well on the recruiting trail. But then at Belmont as well, I mean, they're three and seven. They can be five and seven after this and have a win against Power Five team. You know, or a team that's you know very prestigious in that in that regard at Louisville. So I think you know personally, they again obviously you want you know your first bowl win you want in your first bowl game since 2019. Uh, but I think those two wins would just you know bolster this uh, team up and in going into you know um, into the uh, next year as well for uh, yeah for basketball. Okay, and what about you, Joe? Well, let's go back to uh, talk about the first bowl game for the A State football team. That's obviously going to be big because, like you said, the first. First bowl game victory in how long? Uh, I believe their last bowl victory was in 2018. I believe. Wow, wow, yeah, that'll be that'll be big. That'll be big for the school, and of course, you know, for morale for the athletics department, and for much of the students uh, at large. But then we go to the basketball game and the upcoming uh, game against Louisville. Um, obviously, A State's going to want a victory over Louisville, and with Louisville being a big name in basketball or college basketball here in this country. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've seen a bunch of like uh, blue and white UK stuff, a bunch of places back, like back home. Uh, but yeah, it's, th th those seem like very important wins. Uh, I believe A-State basketball also has an upcoming game against Belmont and that would also be big for a big victory for us. Uh, so, yeah, basically what they want for Christmas is just wins. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think football is the biggest – I think it's the most important, uh, mm -hmm. per se. Like, obviously, the bowl game, like you said, they haven't been since 2019. Then, overall, their bowl their bowl history, they've been – uh, this will be their 18th time going. They're 8-8-1. Eight and eight and one. Um, So, they're, you know, not too bad, but not too great either. Um, and then, like I said, it's been it's been a year of turnaround for them. You know, they're one of seven FBS teams to win three or four games last year, and then to make a bowl game the next year. So this is huge for A State. I actually think that, and I'm I'm glad that they're in a position to win a bowl game. Uh, even if they don't win, of course they would love to win. <laughs> Just making it making it there though, I think yeah. is 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 good for them. And yeah. then also, I would like the other thing I would like to address is the. Women's basketball, yeah, just the men's. I think what the women's basketball will like for Christmas, per se, is to get better rebounding, get better on the boards. They look through their schedule. They have lost the rebounding battle more times than they've won it. And they're four and three. They're not too bad. But it's like three out of those four losses are due to them not rebounding the basketball. So I think they should really, really either get, you know, try to get a big or just make more of a conscious effort to – get on the rebound and rebound the basketball. But, like, they've been doing well. Of course, the men's been doing well. Football, obviously, is doing well. So, I, I think A-State Athletics, I think, like I said, I think they'll, they'll get what they want for Christmas, wins in every every department, hopefully. So, that's how I, that's how I feel. About I feel like as well, football, I mean, if you look at it in the long-term sense, I mean, they, they had Butch Jones here, and he's had a pretty, I mean, to be fair, a pretty awful two first years. Yeah. Um, they were pretty terrible in terms of their offense production, the defense production. I mean, anything across the board, they were just not very good. And he was on the hot seat at the beginning of the year. I mean, when you lost by 70 or 73 to Oklahoma, that's obviously not something that you want. So the fact that he's gotten here to this bowl game in itself is just an accomplishment. Again, you, like you said, you know, wins are something that you want, right, oh, as, yeah. as an athletic department. I mean, that's, that's something that is probably on their Christmas list. But I think just getting here alone was probably something that was an accomplishment in and of itself that should – be applauded. I mean, you have a, a true freshman quarterback that you're handing the reins to, and Rayner. I mean, that's – and he's been producing at a significant rate. Um, that's something that I think this team has had on their Christmas list for years now, uh, before COVID, um, and now they've gotten it. So I think it's been impressive in, in the long sense, even on the short-term sense as well. So. 
think the cherry on top would be out of everything. They win the game, yeah. but then Jalen Rayner stays. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't transfer. Yes. I think that'll just make it even all the better. And I'm glad for Butch because, you know, when they lost by 73, it was obviously big, even though it was Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah, Oklahoma's obviously a, in the college football world, they're a big school. Yeah. But still, that's still embarrassing. No one yeah. wants to lose by that much. Um, but like I said, I'm happy for Butch. And like last year wasn't good <laughs> at all either. Yeah. Record wise, it was a struggle. And like I said, just for them to bounce back the way they have mm-hmm. after having, you know, not winning much last year and then to be in a bowl game this year, I think it's impressive. Absolutely. But that's all the time we have for this segment. You're watching the A State Sports Take Christmas. ASU TV shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. I think one of the things I learned at Arkansas State was life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond to it, and that's just something that I live by. A-State is home, and they're going to treat you like you're a part of the family. This is the A-State Sports Take Christmas Special. I'm Chase Weeks and I'm joined with Jacob and Tristan. And our topic for this segment is which sports figure deserves the most coal in their stocking this year? Jacob, I'll let you start us off. Who do you think? I mean, this is a group of people and I'm sorry to say this, but I wanna just clarify a couple things. I graduated from Florida State University. Go Seminoles. Yeah, exactly. Uh, who's, who's number five in the country? But anyway, I will say that just for transparency's sake, because I think a group of people that deserve stocking stuffers, or excuse me, coal in their stockings, uh, are the playoff committee. I think they have screwed over royally FSU, and they have screwed over uh, the great team that is that. Um, you, can, you can disagree with me all you want, but uh, that is the general consensus of everyone that watched that program. Uh, so I think if you look at the playoff committee, they did not look at an actual resume, and they just looked at an eye test. And I feel like that deserves, in and of itself, a coal in, a stocking of itself. And then you have Kirk Herbstreet, who went on and defended them like it's nothing. So I think, you know, again, for me, it's the playoff committee, but second place there is uh, Kirk Herbstreit. Are you done crying? I am. Do you need tissues? I do. Maybe a tissue? Oh, a couple. Maybe a binky? Uh, a little bit. Maybe a towel? Eh, what? Not really. Maybe it, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think the sports figure that deserves the most, most coal in their stocking this year is arguably Patrick Mahomes. Um, I think Patrick Mahomes is... In over his head a little bit. I mean, the guy's drafted out of Texas Tech, so he should know how to lose because that's all they breed there is losers. Um, Cliff Kingsbury would like to have a word. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now he's losing one game to it. Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> he almost fell. Um, but anyways, he loses the game, and now all their fans are crying while they got Taylor Swift about to make a song about Kadarius Tony. And if they don't watch out, the Broncos are going to overseed them for the first place in their division. But – you know, for, for the Cole, you know, you got to look at it as who's kind of been, you know, the most naughtiest and you know, hasn't been the most sportsman of the year, if you want to say that. So, you know, I'm going to go on the hill of Patrick Mahomes. I mean, do you, you know, do you not think it would be a little more on Kansas City's wide receivers rather than Patrick Mahomes? Like, you know, how do you feel? About no, that? because a good quarterback can make his receivers look better. How, how so? I mean, you gotta you gotta catch the ball. Like, I mean, you can't. You gotta it. catch the ball, but you also gotta be able to have a quarterback to throw you a pass to where you can actually catch it. But you know, I digress. I mean, you look at the years that 
maybe guys like Brett Favre didn't have the best receivers ever, but he was still able to lead them deep into the playoffs, and they were still able to win games when it mattered most. And you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like in basketball when people talk about Stephen Curry being the greatest point guard of all time, but when it comes down to where it matters most, he chokes. He chokes, and you know, him and Patrick Mahomes kind of do the same thing. I mean, I don't know about you know. And I'm going to be honest, I did not watch this last game. Good. Like I, you know. You didn't miss much. It's kind <laughs> yeah. of like watching the Patriots game. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I'm not, like, as hyped about Patrick Mahomes as other people. But, like, yeah. you know, I, I feel he plays good. I feel he's got a great, you know, RPO ability. I mean, just his, <laughs> you know. And maybe it was just terrible this last game. But, I, you know, I feel like he's really able to, to you know, get good <laughs> <laughs> but I think the, the offense, I think. <laughs> but I think, you know. You, Who's that thumb? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that thumb? <laughs> but I think, you know, it's more on the running backs and the wide Because you got to get the ball. Like yeah. I mean, you can't. It's literally well, okay, throwing away Okay, let's just put it this way. Two all-pro quarterbacks that are arguably high up in the MVP race both lost games they shouldn't have lost. I mean, at least the Chiefs didn't lose to the Cowgirls. So, I mean, I guess it's okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. I Uh-oh. Just, <laughs> 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 about the Eagles game, Cooper. <laughs> How about the Eagles game, Cooper. <laughs> oh. Speaking of sports figures that need coal, it's uh, Cooper. What's your last name, Melder? <laughs> it's Lockett, bro. It's Lockett. No, this is fun. This has been fun. Yeah, very. I was not expecting this, honestly. Well, you got to go out with a bang. I mean, we have we had Cooper Medler come out on the show, and we <laughs> <laughs> and here he is. It's pronounced Cooper Melder. Uh, Cooper Melder. Don't call me Juice Box if you can't pronounce Melder. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, we we love breaking the fourth wall here at ASU TV. But yeah, Sean yeah. McDermott's going to use this, by the way, as like oh, material. Well, well, I mean, well, in, well. in terms of going out in a bang, I mean that, that Sean McDermott <laughs> would 100, percent you know, go out with this. So, you know, oh yeah. god, what does this show become? Uh, no idea. But Jacob, any more, you know, people who you think? Um, everybody on the college football committee, I think they deserve to be thrown off a cliff. But again, that's my opinion. Um, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, not wrong. No, 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 exactly. Again, not literally, not literally. Oh. Figuratively, but um, all I, fair. He's gonna say no. I mean, literally. <laughs> but no, I mean literally. <laughs> <laughs> you know me like you know me like nothing. But yeah, I don't. I just I think you know the playoff committee just screwed over my you know favorite team. But again, the team that actually deserved to be in there as well. And uh, again, I think uh, also the person that deserves coal is a uh, you know uh, Professor Sullivan who thinks that a Christmas story is the best Christmas movie <laughs> ever. But we won't go there. Um, and that is what it is. So careful, his his shiny bald head's gonna turn into a redhead here in a minute. <laughs> I have more red hair than me. I'm gonna go in there and see a Christmas ornament. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. On the first day of Christmas, Sullivan gave to me a bright, shiny red ornament for my tree. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. Um, I was definitely not expecting all of this, but that's all the time we have for this segment, segment this year's show. Thanks for watching the A-State Sports Take Christmas special. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas! Woo! Go Knowles! <laughs> <laughs>